Buffalo is now with us. Uh, Nick Perkins, CJ Massenberg represent the student body. The head coach Nick Oates is here. We're going to ask him to make a statement on the game. Then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen from Buffalo. Nate, please. Uh, not, not the way we uh, anticipated in the season. Our, you know, try to look at the positives. We, we shoot. We got 32 wins right now. It's the most in all of Division One basketball, tied with Houston. Obviously, they play later. These guys had an unbelievable career. If we were going to get beat, it's going to have to be by somebody really tough. And Texas Tech's really tough. You got to give them a ton of credit. I mean, they kind of beat us at our own game. They they out toughed us. They took charges, killed us on the glass. I think they were plus. Yeah, they're plus 10 on second chance points, plus 9 on points off turnovers. Uh, that's pretty much the game, and that's where we've been good at all years. Beating people on the glass, turning them over, getting out in transition. They, they, they did a better job of it than we did. I, I don't, you know, I told our guys in the locker room, don't let one loss take away what, what you've done this year. Put Buffalo basketball on the map. Been ranked in the top 25 all year. You know, you're a great team. Even better people, they're, they're going to leave out the highest character group of kids I've ever worked with. So disappointing that it ended like this. I, you know, we wanted to go further, but we're not going to let one loss define, uh, you know, we had an unbelievably successful year beyond what anybody would have imagined could have happened here at Buffalo. First question is right there on the left. Thank you. Uh, Nate, Josh Reed with um, CBS in Buffalo. You really struggled giving up offensive boards there to, to start the game. How much did that kind of dictate, as you mentioned, they out-toughed us, if you will. How much did that just kind of you know, put that in the back of the team's head that, that this was going to be a tough road to hoe? Yeah, well, I mean, it was an awful start. We, we gave up three old boards like right away in the first couple minutes. It's not how you want to start a game. And we, you know, at times we cleaned it up for a minute, but then we just – that, that really, to me, is what that and our turnovers, you know, and we, we kind of had said we had to clean the turnovers up. If we could be under 10 turnovers, they don't get points in transition. We get more shots, and then if we could have done a better job on the glass, I think, you know, I think we had to give ourselves a chance to win. But you got to give them credit. Those are some big, tough guys that it is how tough us, which is disappointing because we've been the tougher team probably. 34, 35 nights out of the year in the 36 games. So to, to lose the last one uh, on toughness hurts. It's not really who we are, but it happens that way sometimes. For Nate and CJ, uh, there was a stretch about 11 minutes. I think I kind of 18 possessions without a field goal. Uh, what did they do to take you out of your offense and, and the way you were able to score so well this year? CJ, first, please. Uh, just. I mean, it wasn't one thing in particular. Just credit to their overall defense. And uh, I feel like we did get some good looks, but they just didn't drop for us. So, yeah. Nate? Yeah, I mean, early in the game, we had two layups we, we missed. And we got to the free throw line. We, we, I think we were four for nine in the first half at the line, if I remember right. Yeah. We ended the game 11 to 22. Like, we, just, we left too many points on the board against a really good defensive team like that. We had to convert at the rim. I, we were 5 for 13 at the rim at the half, if I remember right. You know, we, we couldn't do that. They had good shot blocking. I mean, they, their defense, shoot, they're number one in the country. So they're obviously really good. You know, we, we're one of the better offensive teams in the country, and our offense was not uh, where it needed to be. We didn't – we made some poor decisions. Our turnovers were – I mean, that was a big issue, too. We, we you know, we turned the ball over on back-to-back -back possessions a few times in there. I, I don't remember the – so we, we went 18 straight possessions without scoring a field goal. Yeah, that's bad. That, that's, that is by far our worst offensive performance of the year. We, I mean, which they're number one defense in the country, so you'd pick it. I, I got to do a better job. You know, I, I kind of looked at their defense to, to emulate our defense. Maybe I should have picked the best defenses out and looked at how to attack them when I, a few months ago. and. In the off season, I'll have to figure out how to do a better job, and so some of this is on me. And it's hard with a one day prep. I mean, you're, you know, we had to beat Arizona State, so you put all your prep time into that game. 
you got one day between games and you're trying to figure out how to beat the number one defense in the country, it's hard. You know, it, it helps having five seniors, but we just, you know, missing shots and giving up old boards early kind of deflated us, I thought, and we, we just got out of our game then. Uh, this question's for either CJ or Nick, um, Rachel Lindsay from the Buffalo News. You took a 25-24 lead late in the first half on Devonta Jordan's three-pointer, but what did Tech do to take back control of this game, go into halftime with, wide, with a wider lead? Nick, you're first, and CJ, please. Um, I don't think they did anything in particular. Um, I think they just kind of like Wells well said, they out toughed us. You know, they did – Give credit to them. They, you know, they they defense the rebound, they offense the rebound. It, you know, some of the stuff that we hang our hats on. You know, they did it better tonight. Yeah, for me, uh, I would say the same thing. But um, in particular, uh, rebounding, uh, they killed us on the boards, uh, and they got to the loose balls before we did. And, uh, you can't beat a you can't beat a good team like that. For the seniors. Um, you know, I know that, it, that Nate said that, you know, don't let this define what you guys have been able to do since you've been here. How long until this sinks in that, the, you know, this is kind of it and, and kind of what are the emotions right now? CJ, first, please. Uh, the emotions are kind of all over the place, you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, you hate to go out like that, but only one team gets to, you know, end their season on with a win, you know. So, um, man, I just want to thank the city of Buffalo for allowing me to come in and and just have an impact on you guys. And you guys have embraced me and and loved me, and I loved you guys right back. And just just this ride with uh, Nick and Coach Oates and all of the assistants been amazing. And I just want to thank Buffalo. I'm like CJ, you know, it's, it's kind of all over. Um, you kind of think about some of the things you could have did better. Um, and, I mean, it hurts. But, you know, obviously, you know, me and CJ, we're not done playing basketball. And, you know, I thank the city of Buffalo for all for all y'all done for me. You know, how many chances Coach Osten gave me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. I just, you know, it's been a long ride. You know, I'm, I'm going to miss Buffalo. We have three minutes to go in this session. Next question is right here. Matt Craig from SB Nation. I got a, kind of a similar uh, question for the players. This group of seniors, you know, the 31 seasons, NCAA tournament runs, what do you want the legacy to be uh, of, of this group? And then if Coach could uh, comment on that as well. Nick, you're first this time. Um, I would say just the, uh, just the, the kind of guys we are, you know. Um, I, you know, outside of me and CJ, I mean, Dante, you know, Jeremy, and Montel are three amazing guys. You know, they guys who – you know, come in and you never hear them complain today. You know, they, they come in, they work hard, and they do they do what, you know, blue collar is. And, uh, you know, um, I think we just want the legacy to be just, just who we are out the court, you know, just good guys for the city of Buffalo. Um, basketball can only take you so far. But, um, I mean, the true per the true who you really are is who you are as a person off the court. So I think that's more important than basketball. So just who we are uh, off the court as people. Yeah, I would agree with Nick. Uh, just our character and um, just who we are as people. That's what the most important thing about legacy is. But I feel like um, the five seniors, you know, no matter how bad your day is going, if you talk to one of us, you're going to have a smile on your face and your day is going to get pick, uh, picked up and turned around. You know, uh, the city loved us for a reason. You know, we were always smiling and interacting with the fans. And that's just I just want people to remember that for, from our legacy and as far as on the basketball court. Uh, just how hard we play, how together we play. You know, I nev I've never been on a team that shared the ball as much as we do, and the distribu distribution of wealth was crazy on this team. And, man, yeah. Nick, uh, their size seemed to pose a challenge for your team, rebounding and defending the paint, but you had some success scoring inside and rebounding. Can you just talk about going up against their front line and, and what were some of the challenges there? Um, I mean, they front line, they was, they was big and strong. You know, the, Tariq Owens, dude, our, his wingspan probably about 7'2". He got some really long arms. But, I mean, like you said, I was just able to, you know, just use my size, use my body, and, uh, you know, get into the chest, take away their shot blocking. But really, I mean, it, it posed a challenge for us early, I think. Uh, but a lot of the shots, you know, we missed, like, CJ, like, in germ, like, a lot of the shots they usually make, they miss. They have really good open looks. You know, tonight they just didn't fall. 
We're going to take these two <clears throat> questions. One, two. Nate, um, coming into the tournament, you said it would be disappointing if you guys didn't make it to the, to the Sweet 16, but you said it with the caveat that, look, if, if we come out and play well and somebody beats us, that, that's fine. We'll live with that. Do you feel like that happened? No, I, I don't. I, I don't think we played our best game. I mean, if you look, it's not like we just didn't. We, we shot 33% from three, so that, that's good enough to win games. We, we, we got out tough, so I'm a little disappointed. I, I don't want one loss to define the season, though. So even when people asked me at the beginning of the year what my expectations were, I, I didn't want to go, you know, Final Four, bust, or even Sweet Six. I just want to be playing our best basketball coming into the year. We were on a, were we on a 13-game winning streak uh, coming into this. Is that right? Yeah. So I thought we were playing pretty good basketball coming into this game. And shoot, it's sports. It's, it's what happens in basketball. You have a bad game. That's why I shoot the NBA playoffs are series, not not one game deal. So the best team can win. And college basketball, it's a one game deal. Sometimes, and I'm not saying that they we were, we were better than them, but sometimes the best team doesn't win. Sometimes, you know, I thought. You know, if we played them in a series, we could play them a lot tougher than we did tonight. And it just some nights it happens. I don't want our guys to feel like it was a huge disappointing year. It wasn't at all. 32 wins is ridiculous. I, we, I may coach the rest of my life and I get 32 wins in a year. So these guys are some of the best kids I've ever coached. But yeah, it, it's, it hurts right now. It's a little disappointing the way we lost tonight. Final question. Nate, you're losing that core group of five seniors. But for the younger players coming back, what do you want them to take from that group and take from this, you know, from this NCAA tournament experience and apply to next year into the future of your program? Well, I think they've learned a lot from these seniors. They've learned uh, punching the clock every day. These guys don't take days off. The intensity level in practice on a daily basis is unreal. The character of these, these guys when stuff doesn't go bad or doesn't go right, these guys have shown the way how to, how to react, how to, you know, handle adversity I think they've they've learned a lot I mean these seniors have meant the world to me as a coach uh, these two guys right here I, I've coached I don't know how many division one games but every single one I've coached I've had these two guys I haven't coached a division one game without these two so it's going to be different for me I, lo I love these two guys you know like sons uh, I mean they're they've been they've meant everything to me over the last four years and I think they, they've done a great job setting the table for the young guys, showing them how to work, how, how to play, how to be unselfish. I mean, this guy is better than, I said better than 80% of the bigs in high major programs. I, I think he showed it tonight, how he played against the number one defense.